Hi, how's it going? It's Beer Making 101 here again. Uh, I'm Nick Braulio, and what we're going to do today is bottle an Oktoberfest that I've been putting off bottling for quite some time. So what I've done is I have pulled all of my bottling stuff out of storage, and it is very unclean. Um, as you can see, it's all kind of piled in there. There's the Oktoberfest, five gallons strong. Uh, there is my little tote that I keep a lot of my junk in for brewing. And here are some bottles that need to be cleaned. Um, I personally, when I'm bottling, I like to use the flip top bottles because I don't have to mess with capping and they're reusable. Um, all you have to do is buy the little rubber seal here. You can buy extra um, replacements for those. Uh, they're really cheap. They're about two dollars from like uh, Midwest Supplies or Northern Brewer. Um, and so I just continue to use those uh, ceramic cap bottles. Um, if I don't use those, they're also a pint, so they're a little bit larger. If I don't use those, I do. I no longer bottle in 12 ounce bottles. I only bottle in pint and greater. So 22 ounce bombers are nice bottling gear. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and start cleaning the gear and to do that I have to get set up. That's the key to bottling really is making sure just like with brewing everything needs to be clean. Um, nice and clean that way you don't get any weird off flavors in your beer or get skunky or moldy or whatever. I generally just use this oxygen cleaner. Uh, it works really well. It's inexpensive um, and it stores well. I don't have an opportunity to brew that often anymore, so um, the ability to have things store for long periods of time is really nice. Put the garbage over there. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little bath going here of sanitizer, hot water, nice and hot, and then we'll throw some sanitizer in there, premium cleanser, whatever you want to call it, we'll throw it in there, and we'll get to cleaning stuff. Alright. Use one tablespoon of the cleanser in there. Sorry for the bad camera work. I'm no less Stroud and Survivor Man. I'm much less experienced. I'm going to mix that up. It's nice and hot. Burn my fingers. I like to use this the sprayer. Kind of mix that up a little bit more. Give me just over a gallon in there. And I'm going to clean my utensils as well as uh, most of my bottles in that. And seal that back up and we'll get the utensils in there. Alright, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start the uh, the priming process. So some people like to use uh, dry malt extract. Um, some people use priming sugar. I've used both. It doesn't really, I can't tell the difference to be honest. And I happen to have some of this right now and I don't have any DME. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill up two cups of water. I use filtered water for this as well and I'm going to put it in the little pan that I use. I have an under sink filter that uh, gives me really good tasting water. Um, it doesn't hurt that I have very good tasting water in Champaign, Illinois either. but put that on high heat and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the priming sugar and I'm going to stir it into this as I pour it in um, and bring it to a boil. So um, you have to keep a real close eye on this because if it bubbles over as it's, as it's boiling it makes a giant mess. It's no fun to clean up because it's sticky. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and stir that in right now as I work on cleaning the other stuff this will come to a boil. Okay, so what I've done now is I have cleaned out the inside of my bottling bucket pretty well since it was really gross. Um, and I have attached the spigot on here. And I have it basically sitting on um, the door of my dishwasher with the Oktoberfest right above it right there. Um, right there with the dirty dishes and everything. So... Um, as long as it's, you know, the, the spigot stays clean and what goes into it stays clean, it's fine. Um, the reason I have it set up this way is for one, that the dishwasher door is ha a handy, uh, 
it's a handy table for me to kind of set this on. It doesn't need to go on the floor. It gives me a little bit of space to work with. Um, and it, I don't have to lower and raise it quite as far. And since it's lower than the Oktoberfest, the uh, siphoning process will be a little bit easier. So that's what I'm going to start next. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that my siphoning hose and everything in my racking cane, which is actually not in there yet, are clean. And then I'm going to go ahead and start the siphon. All right, so what I've done here is I've attached the racking cane and I've begun the siphoning process. Unfortunately, the camera shut off um, and I didn't get the procedure of actually making that work. But really, all I did was make sure that this tube right here had clean water in it, um, nearly full. And also, you need to make sure that this is shut off or you waste beer and make a giant mess. Whew, glad I caught that. It's been a while, it's been a while since I've bottled. Um, so anyway, what you need to do is make sure that this has got clean water in it, attach it to the racking cane, and then you just lower the other end of it. Um, when you attach this piece here, the other end of it needs to remain higher than that, or obviously water will come out of it, um, and then eventually beer. But as you can see, um, it's filling up the bottling bucket, and what I'm going to do now, after I clean up the mess that I just made, is go ahead and start the bottling process. One other thing that I should mention is that in here, right when I began the siphoning process, I went ahead and added the priming sugar uh, mixture that I had boiled on the stove to it. What that does is that will give it a fermentable sugar that it will use to carbonate the bottles. Alright, while that's siphoning, uh, I'm going to go ahead and start putting the bottles into the sanitizer for cleaning. Um, another thing that I should mention, uh, since I did make a mess um, and realized it, one of the things that I've always found handy when bottling is to put down a towel underneath the, uh, the bottling bucket. And what that does is obviously makes it a little bit easier to clean up later. Um, it only take, took me, you know, losing four ounces, five ounces of precious Oktoberfest to uh, jar my memory on that. Uh, I also learned that the hard way originally, so I guess that makes sense that I have to relearn it that way too. This is one of the things that I find unbelievably irritating about bottling. I'm losing beer out of there. I find that very annoying. Even though it's just a drip, it's a pain to clean up, and it's wasting beer, which, you know, we can't be having that. So, uh, I need to get this done as quickly as possible. Um, the siphon just finished, so what I'm going to do now is, quickly, hopefully, I'm going to take this tube and I'm going to attach what's called the, the, the bottling cane, or the, the bottling thing, I don't even remember what it's called, bottling cane. It has a little valve at the bottom of it. It holds the beer in it. When you push down into the bottle, it releases that valve and it fills the bottles from the bottom up, um, which is the optimal way to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and set that up and we're going to start bottling. All right, I think we're finally ready to get to bottling. So what I've done is I went ahead and moved the bottling bucket up to the counter with its handy little uh, handle there. And I have six bombers, 22 ounce bottles that have been sanitized and ready to go. I have attached the tube to the bottling spigot. I managed to uh, tighten that up a little bit too. Um, I'm not quite sure. I got really lucky there, but uh, I tightened that up so it's not dripping any longer. And as you can see, this is in the sanitizer. This is the bottling cane. And what I'm going to do so I'm going to go ahead and turn on the spigot. Whoa, there goes the beer. Yay! All right. Now we're cooking. And I'm going to try to do this one-handed. I'm going to take this and just like your prom date, it's going to bottle. It's going to fill from the bottom up. And 
and you need to make sure that the bottles are are, are nice and clean um, when you when you're before you start doing this, because you never know what kind of creepy crawlies and nastiness can get in there in storage. Um, I generally will fill them with the cane in to the top, and then I would take it take the bottling cane out. That leaves a nice amount of headroom there. Let's go ahead and do one more. Um, uh, what I was saying is I generally will run them through the dishwasher with a heat dry and that will go ahead and, and um, clean them out quite well and they're pretty dry when they're done. I've sanitized them and not sanitized them after that. I um, haven't really noticed any difference. So, as long I mean, you know clean when you see it. So, just keep them clean and the beer should be fine in there. I'm going to go ahead and bottle the, the rest of this stuff. Um, until I get to a point when I start capping. Alright, well, we've completed the bottling process. That's the end result there. As you can see, most of them are flip tops, uh, with the remaining ones being 22 ounce bottles. Um, I haven't counted them, but that's, you know, that's five gallons of beer, more or less, save for the tiny little bit that was left over in the bucket that I am going to consume as a good luck. Um, it's a little tradition that I have anytime I'm brewing or bottling or kegging. Whatever's left over is the little good luck shot, good luck treat that I have. Um, and I have tasted it. It's not carbonated so it obviously tastes like flat beer but it's pretty good. Um, pretty, I'm pretty happy with the result again this year. So from here what we're going to need to do is any of the bottles that are not swing tops, we need to sanitize the caps and go ahead and cap them. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a handful of these, uh, oops, drop it on the floor. That's okay. It's going to go in the sanitizer. And I'm just going to let them sit in here for a second, dry my hand off, and then I'm going to go get the bottle or the capper and we'll get started. All right, so I've got all these set up. I've got the caps sanitized, and um, I got my capper right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go through and just go ahead and cap everything um, that's not a uh, flip top. When you cap, what I like to do. So make sure I have a nice indentation right there. I use the oxygen sealing caps, um, just LD Carlson, very inexpensive, uh, no markings on them. That way I can write like a letter or some kind of denotation of what the actual uh, contents are. And as you can see, it's a nice clean cap all the way around. And I'm going to go ahead and finish these up. Once the bottling is complete, you basically all you need to do is store them for a few weeks. Um, my Oktoberfest, I usually like to store it and let it carb for about a month before I uh, taste it. Unfortunately, Actual Oktoberfest is next week. Thank goodness I'll be going up to New Glarus to enjoy their Oktoberfest. So this will probably sit for two to three weeks before I crack one open and taste it. Um, and then it will quickly be consumed by friends and family that uh, are chomping at the bit to get at it. So um, there you have it. That's pretty much That's pretty much the whole thing. Five gallons of beer, bottled nicely, ready for storage. Um, now all that's left is clean up the uh, vessels and the bottling bucket, which has a tiny bit left in it. Enjoy my little treat to myself. Watch my red beans and rice cook and get ready for tonight. And put it in storage. Thanks for watching. Hope this was helpful.